uh, molding resin casting small parts. I'm sitting here thinking not all of us have access to a 3D printer. Not all of us can actually do the CAD and the technical work required to use a 3D printer. But there are a lot of good ways to, to duplicate parts without it, and this is one of them. So what I'm going to talk about today Come on. Wake up. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the materials that you need to buy and what to look for and what not to look for because you're going to go to your craft store and you're going to see some things that will not work. But I can save money. You get what you pay for. I'm going to do. A, I'm going to demo how to pour a silicone mold. So I've got all my stuff here. That's that's kind of the meat of the presentation is how to make the mold. I'm going to talk a little bit about resin casting, and I'm going to do a kind of a fake casting demo because resin is not something you do indoors. Resin stinks. Resin needs to be done outdoors or with plenty of ventilation and safety gear. And I'm going to add, I'll answer as many questions as I can. I'm going to be here. I'm, I'm here all week. If you have other questions, feel free to grab me in the halls and say, "Hey, I was wondering." So. That's where we're going. So like I said, first thing we're talking about is how to make the mold. It's probably the part that you find the most intimidating. First thing you need is the rubber. You want to buy rubber. You do not want to go to Michael's or Joann's or Hobby Lobby. You're gonna go, you're gonna go to the craft craft section, you're gonna see this little white can that says cast and craft latex mold maker. And you're going to be like, hey, this is something I can get locally. It's going to be awesome. It is not awesome. It is not awesome because latex shrinks. And I'm going to pass some things around. These are, um, I learned how to do this as a costumer. I learned how to do this from guys who did garage kits who made copies of Mecca model kits from Japan. If you want something that's going to be the same size a week from now, a month from now, six months from now, you don't want to use latex. This is the, the um, Sculpey Positive I made. This is supposed to be an Iron Man arc reactor. This is a latex mold I made of the Iron Man arc reactor. I wasn't, cons I wasn't concerned about size particularly for this project, but if you're making something that has to, to be to spec, that has to be to tolerance, which are, we, is going to be a thing with this, you want to be careful of this. If I try to put this back into this, you can see how much it shrunk. And I'm going to pass this around. So. so you can see latex shrinks. So Yay! It's so cheap. Now, is that just as it cures, or as it over cures time? and over time? Okay, yeah. so so this will continue to shrink. I think it'll for continue the next to shrink. Months. Probably. Well, that, these that's about a year and a half old. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, yeah, that's from a costume I did last Memorial Day. So that 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 piece of latex is probably a year and a half old. So I mean, these are all the ones I did for that costume that, and they stick together. And they're kind of a pain in the butt, and I don't like them. So don't do that. Get actual two-part silicone rubber. It comes in different makes. The two that I have used, I've used Umu and I've used Coffee Flex, which is what I'm going to use today. Some are food safe, some are not. I taught kids how to do this over the school year. We did, we molded a glass bottle and we did sugar casting, which is kind of the same thing. And the first thing the kids all said to me is, can we eat the sugar? And I said, no, because we use Umu. Umu is not food. This is not a food safe rubber. You cannot eat it. The silicone is going to outgas weird chemicals and possibly get sick. If you want to do anything that you want to use food safe, I like coffee. Umu makes a food safe. I use Coffee Flex. It, uh, the chef developed it, so I like it a lot. Couple things you want to pay attention to: the ratio, one to one. 
which means equal parts of A and B. Most of them are going to come in two parts. They are, you know, these are going to be liquid until I mix them. And then the chemical reaction happens and then it hardens. You can get one to one rubber. There are some craft rubbers where you'll get a tub of the rubber and a little thing of catalyst. And it'll be like a, 10 to, a 1 to 10 or 10 to 1, or the ratio will be printed on the, on the, the um, packaging. I like 1 to 1 because it's easiest to work with. Is it 1 to 1 by volume? Um, I, go, uh, I know the Copyflex works by weight. This works basically by Ulu we did by volume. So um, read the directions, basically. Um, get copy, because even when I order Copyflex, you order it by the weight, and there's like a, you fill it with, you do this thing with rice where you figure out how much you actually need to order. Um, umu is just mix the two bottles together. Um, careful measuring and mixing by scale. Use a scale. The place where people go wrong most often on this is that they don't measure, they have too much of A or too much of B, and their silicone never sets. Careful measuring and careful mixing. I'm going to show you the best way to mix this stuff to make sure that you get a 100% mix. Because if you put A and B, but you don't mix all of A with B, there's a little core at the middle where it's better mixed. Again, you're going to, it's going to set, but it's not going to set properly. The one thing you want to pay attention to is you're going to see the words pop time. That's how long you have between when A and B meet and when they start to set up. That's how long you have to work. I've seen pot times anywhere from 5 to 20 minutes. Once you mix this stuff, you are on the clock. It will harden in your mixing vessel. So when you Make sure you are ready to go before you mix your rubber. <coughs> Don't mix your rubber and be like, oh, I forgot to glue something down. And yeah, you're, you are now screwed. <laughs> <laughs> unless, you, unless your glue dries really fast, you are now screwed. So that's the first thing that you need. So I like AB. Um, Ulu makes one, and then how long it sets you want to pay attention to, too. Um, there's an umu that sets in about uh, about 90 minutes. That's what we used at school. I was really happy with it. The copy, this stuff takes about four hours. But again, it's this is like this is developed by a chef for um, bakeries, for like Duff Goldman, for people who want to do like candy and chocolate and sugar, which is what I do with it. So, so because you cannot move it while it's setting. So if you just if this something goal, it has to set for eight hours. Well, I put it outside and it's gonna rain. You are now screwed. What? Get an umbrella and stand there all night. <laughs> Second most important thing you need to think about is how are you going to mold this? You have to contain this stuff. It is liquid. Legos are awesome for this with a few caveats. The higher up your stack of Legos is, the higher your know, volume physics works. We tried to do, we did a uh, bottle in a Lego box. It was one Lego thick and it leaked all over everything because pressure happens at the bottom. You know, liquid pressure happens. Physics is that the kids got a practical physics lesson. It was kind of awesome. Um, this one probably won't because I've got it. I know how to build them. What's important you should, be, you should give yourself a quarter to a half inch around your parts. You don't want it to be right up next to your part. You want to have some rigid wall so that if you're wanting, so that the silicone has something to set, or the resin rather, has something to set up against. And they need to be able to contain a liquid. So you have to be sealed. Legos, like I said, work great. Um, if you're going, if you're not sure about your Legos, or you've got a tall mold, um, clay, works really well. Um, we used Play-Doh in school because it's what we had and it didn't really do a whole lot. If you really want to get serious about this, and if you, we'll talk about two-part molds in a little bit, they make special clay 
that is designed for uh, silicone molding that is, um, has no sulfur in it and doesn't react with the silicone. So if you really want to get into this, invest, and I, use, I don't own the clay, but I've used it, and it's, some, it's something that you would want to invest in if you really want to get serious about this. The other one I've seen is people cut uh, slabs of plexi. This one's held together with binder clips. I've also seen it done with hot glue. Because then you take, when you're done, you take a hair dryer, you melt, warm it up, and the hot glue peels right off the plexi. So I've seen people do reusable mold boxes with hot glue. I've also seen you know, styrofoam cups, plastic cups, um, basically anything you can find that's going to contain a liquid, that's going to hold your piece, that's going to you know, not have you wait. The, the other thing you want to think of, you don't want to waste the rubber either. You don't want to have a teeny little key cap with like a huge box around it. Does a uh does the, it produce heat as it cures? What? Do the does the, the silicone does not. Okay. The resin does. Okay. Yeah. Uh, follow up to that. Is there anything that is there any material that you would recommend not using with silicone because it either sticks or it reacts or with resin, for instance, but have a chemical reaction? I'm not sure. I've only ever done plastic and sculpey, mm -hmm. so I'm sure that there are materials out there that will react poorly. But I've done I mean, I've done ABS plastic Legos. I've done Sculpey. I've done resin casts of other resin casts or silicone casts of other resin casts. I've done like the second and third generation copies of things. And that's fun. So I'm sure they're out there. I have not encountered them. Silicone is very very inert. That's kind of one of the nice things about it is there's not a lot it does react with. There are some things though. With, what it comes down to is affecting that chemical reaction. But that is, I can look that up, but that is something I've never run into, but I'm only doing limited here. Ooh, right. Right, right. I was, I was talking about the clay. I'm going, to I'm going to demonstrate the most simple version of this. Teacher, I'm going to start at the bottom, scaffold, you, scaffold it up. So I'm going to do a one-part mold where I'm not doing anything weird, I'm just pouring it, letting it go, and it's done. If you want to make something that, where you want to cast all 360 degrees around it, like a key cap or a joystick bay or a button or something, you would want to do a two-part mold, which is a little bit harder. So it's why, like I said, I'm not going to, I don't have time to do everything. I could do, I could do an eight-hour workshop on this. Two-part mold, this is what a two-part mold looks like. You make hat, you, you uh, embed your piece in clay, you put the box around it, you put some, it's called, uh, it's called a, there's a chemical you can buy, it's called mold release, you spray it, you pour the silicone, you let it set, you turn the box over, you take it apart, you, you take it out, you turn it over, you put the box back together, and then you pour the other side with more release. That's what these are keys, and you put little keys in it so that when you put it back together, it goes in the right way. Like I said, this is way, 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 way more complicated than it's. I know how to do it, but it's not something I can demo in like 45 minutes. And again, sulfur free is the most important thing. Don't just grab like. If you're going to seal the edges of a mold on the outside, yeah, you can get away with using your kid's Play-Doh, or you can make some Play-Doh in your kitchen, no problem. If it's actually going to be touching the working mold, make sure you're using the right sulfur-free molding clay. So things that you're also going to need. Mixing containers, you need at least two. And they need to be big enough. Ask me how I know this. How do I know this? Because I've gotten silicone because I've mismeasured. <laughs> Woo, there's silicone everywhere. Um, paint stir sticks. Um, I forgot to get them, so I got some forks from Panda Express when I stopped for lunch the other day. Um, <laughs> you need something that you can throw out. Don't use your good silverware. Don't use silverware. You, know, you, need, you, you want this stuff to be mostly disposable because you're gonna, you, you will see why I want to throw this out when I am done. 
Um, if, if you want to do two-part molds, you need like acorn nuts or marbles for the keys. You need some release agent, which can be, if you go on Amazon and silicone release agent, it comes in a spray can, it's like five bucks. And like I said, a digital scale for measuring. I don't care if you're doing two part, one part, whatever. Scale, 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 scale. How does this work? First thing you do is you build your box. I have taken the liberty of doing this. So what I am going to make today is this for me. I'm going to make a mold to make Lego candies. Sweet. Sweet. I know. It's awesome. What? So what I have done is I built a box, and you can see this box is about three or four Legos wide. And if you look at it, you, you, I'm gonna, it's going to be up here for about four hours. You can swing up and look on it on the way out. If you look, what I have done is I have staggered all of the seams on my Legos. So there are no, so when I built the first box, I paid attention to where my seams were, and then the second half, so the outside of the box, and then building the box up, none of the seams line up. It's like laying flooring. None of your, none of you never want your joints to line up, you never want your seams to line up. That really helps with the leaking. The other thing that helps with the leaking is making, you, Go more than one or two Legos wide. The wider it is, the more space, you know, the more you're gonna, the more work the silicone has to do to run out, and the less it's gonna run out. Having done this before, I know that um, the copy flex is not gonna. I, this is exactly what I did before to make. I have one already done to show you, so I know for a fact this is gonna be okay. And if it's not, I'm gonna look really stupid. The other thing you want to do is make sure that the, what you're going to mold is securely attached. Yeah, I think some of you who were here earlier saw me like take the newspaper and like wham, 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 wham on this. That's what I was doing. Because what's going to happen is once I pour this, I don't want these things to come, up, come detached and floating up. And they will. Um, I worked with some, I was working with a guy, he was doing, uh, did anybody play Warhammer 40K? A lot of Warhammer guys do this to dupe their miniatures, and his miniatures came unglued. He, he did the same thing. He glued the bases to the bottom of uh, like a styrofoam bowl. The, some of the glue came undone, and his miniatures were floating in silicone. He had to like cut the whole thing apart, and it, it, was, it was not a reusable bowl. It was ugly. So make sure it's secure. Super glue. Um, you can buy like... I think you can buy glues, but I've seen hot glue work, super glue works. If uh, hot glue is more easy, again, hot glue is easier to remove. Don't use Elmer's glue. Don't use a glue. Don't use your kid's glue stick. Doesn't work. Use something that's really going to stick. But you also don't need to go out and buy like contact cement or Gorilla Glue or anything like that. You know, super glue, hot glue, that kind of thing is going to work. And make again, make sure it's good and sealed. So I got this ready to go. So I gotta get into. I remember how to get into these. So first thing I did, I'm taking container number one. I'm gonna put it on my scale, and I'm going to you guys. And I'm gonna tear it out so that I'm not measuring the container. So it is my scale boots. My scale takes as long to boot as my laptop does. So I'm gonna start with part A, and I'm gonna remember how to get into part A. This stuff, you, I order it online, so when he, when he ships it, uh, Chef Palazzo ships it really well sealed, which I appreciate. Blacking garbage again. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open part A. So you can see it's very liquid. So I'm going to pour in, and if you need to come, if you can't see, and you need to come forward, you know, do what you got to do. Tell us, I do same thing. I tell the kids, do what you got to do. So what I want to do <coughs> is I want to get an accurate weight of what I'm putting in because it's supposed to be eight and eight because I ordered a pound. Eight is not always going to come back out. It's probably going to be something more like 7.6, 7.7 ounces, just because you know, getting every last little drop is kind of 
Yeah, you, if you really hate your life and you want to do that, rock on. But I am going to scoop it with the fork and get as much out as I can. Yeah, I'm up to 6.8. I'd like to at least get to 7. You don't really want to get this stuff on your hands. It is kind of a pain in the butt to get off your hands. Um, acetone, so cheap nail polish. Acetone is real good for getting um, uncured silicone off your hands. Cured silicone peels right off of everything. All right, so what I got going on here? Okay, so I'm up to 7.2, which is pretty good. 7.2, 7 7.3, 7 I just hate wasting anything because this and so cost wise, I'm, so I'll talk about that while I'm just standing here scraping. Um, yeah, you you know this is not it's not. It's not super expensive, but it's not super cheap either. This is $25 worth of uh, silicone right here, which I just got on my arm. It's okay. I have, uh, I have, a, I have nail, I brought my nail polish remover. It's in my room. Okay, so that happens good. So. My, t my scale says 7.4. So I know that I want, so 7.4 plus 7.4 is 14.8. So I know that that's kind of what I'm shooting for when I put part B in. As soon as I get part B open, because now there's silicone on my hands and they're all slippery. <laughs> I probably, by rights, should be wearing gloves, but I hate wearing I don't, I don't, I can't. I don't wear, I do tie-dye in my class with my fashion kids, and I don't wear um, gloves, and they're like, your hands are purple! I'm like, yeah, my hands are purple, so what? And they'll be pink. I'll, so it'll wash. Kids get freaked out when you get, when you get dirty. It's so funny. Okay. What? Time to change. <laughs> yeah, kids will. So, and part B is a different color, it's orange. This is so you can help, this is so that it will kind of show you that you're properly mixed. So the clock starts now? Clock starts now! Oh, that's so pretty. <laughs> And this stuff is, it's, it's got a pot time about half an hour. This is, like I said, it's, this is made for, like, professional chefs. So. And if you, you want to get within a couple of tenths. If you, you know, if I, don't, if I get to 14, I'm up to 14.6. If I can get up to 14.7, I'll be thrilled. And I, and I know that this stuff, I, 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 having worked with it, I know what I can get away with. And you, as you go, you learn what you can and can't get away with. I've used CobbyFlex enough. I know that if I'm within a couple of tenths, it'll still mix. But if I'm a, an entire ounce off, so if I did, if I only was put seven ounces or six ounces and six ounces of A and seven ounces of B in, I know it's not going to cure. But if I do like 7.4 and 7.6, I know it'll be okay. You've got a little drop off to the right side. Of the oh, I know I'm making a mess. Oh, no, I'm fully aware that I'm making a mess. <laughs> You'll notice I've covered the, the, my work area with newspaper, and I will be washing the scale with uh, acetone later. By a second, by a different, well, this is food safe, so I'm not worried about it messing up my kitchen scale. Okay, mix thoroughly. Get in there and mix it like crazy. Don't be shy. And get, make sure you're um, so scraping, the, I'm scraping the sides. 
and I'm sticking this way, make sure you get somewhere where you can get way down into the bottom. Why do I feel like this is not? And you're going to see the white and the orange, you can see it's getting lighter because the white and the orange are mixing. So I'm going to mix it here for about a minute. And then, now this is why I do the second. To make sure that I'm getting all the way down to the bottom and getting it completely mixed, I'm going to pour it off into a second container. And what you're going to see when you do this is you'll see streaks where it isn't mixed on the bottom. It's really, you're not going to be able to see them from that back there, but I can like promise you they're up here. I can see them. So what you're doing is I'm dumping it so now all the stuff on the bottom is on the top so I can make sure that the bottom gets mixed. And you mix again, yeah. Exactly. I feel like this is not going to be enough. Maybe it didn't. I don't know, I hope my math worked. Well, that's okay. And if I didn't, I'm not going to be too worried about it. Because here's the thing. Uncured silicone will stick to cured silicone. If you don't put, like, so if you're doing a two-part mold and you don't put release agent in, you're going to, it's all going to stick together. So if this doesn't, what? Then you'll have a one-piece mold. You one-piece mold. There are ways around it. It kind of sucks. So if I did the math wrong and I don't quite have enough, I can just order more and pour on top and it'll be fine. Because I feel like the last time I did this, I was running out of space. But that was like a year and a half ago. So I'm going to throw this out. Have a garbage can near you. I'm going to give it another mix. So now I know it's completely mixed. Out of the way here. So I got my box ready to go. So now I want to pour. One of the things you want to think about is air bubbles. You don't want to have a lot of air bubbles in your mold. Some rather, this stuff is, uh, this I know is really good. Um, it outgasses any air bubbles that I put in there from stirring it fairly well. As I speak, because it has a longer pot time, because it'll take four hours to cure, it has plenty of time for those air bubbles to kind of rise up through and go away. There are some things I can do to make that process easier, however. One, and the first thing, is I'm not going to pour from down here. I'm going to pour from up here. And as the stream comes down, air bubbles are going to pop on the way down. So I'm going to pour from way up here. I mean, you want to take your time because you want to let it flow into all the little cracks and nooks and crannies. I mean, I'm doing Legos, so. And it's, what? Sorry. Oh, you're fine. They're, they're debating the plurality of Lego. Oh, Lego, Lego, Legos, <laughs> something like that. Romans didn't have Legos. So what you're going to see is all these little air bubbles coming out of it. And you said um, you said you needed probably at least a quarter inch to half an inch yeah. between your parts and well, the... Well, for this, um, I know that I, I know that one stud is plenty. Oh, okay. So, yeah. One stud, I, because I do so much work with this in Lego, mm -hmm. I think in terms of studs. Okay. Right. And how about uh, over top of the, the part? The same... Same, about the same. same. Okay, so you don't, need, you don't need thicker on the, on the top? Um, not for wood, no. Not for this. Mm -hmm. And if you're doing a two-part mold, it's going to be thicker anyway. Okay, yeah. I'm, think, I'm thinking more in the terms of, you know, like you're doing making candy and, and yeah. stuff like that. It doesn't, yeah. it doesn't have to have like, Super, you know, an yeah. extra uh, This table is not level. <laughs> and this table is not level, which is also a problem. So I'm going to do this. Yeah. 
and I can, so if I, you, you can, and it's the second thing you can do to get the air out is you can drop it a couple times and it'll shake the air up towards the top. <laughs> Actually, this is, no, I guess I did do the math right, because this is exactly what it's supposed to look like. Kate, I think I told you that uh, I heard of somebody who was doing this and they built a shaking table. Yeah, you can get a shaking table. The other thing I've seen um, the really, really serious like garage kit guys do is buy a vacuum, like a food saver, and they will put this, or I've seen two things. I've seen them either do the pour and put it in the food saver. Or I've seen them pull the vacuum on the silicone, like so. Take this, pull a vacuum on it to suck all the air out, and then pour it, which might be easier because, like, this is not going to fit in a. Uh, I don't think it'll use a food saver container big enough to fit this. But a food saver, if you want to get into vacuum chambers, a food saver is a really, really cheap way to do it. And now it's since it's mixed silicone, this will actually this would actually tore off if I let it set up. I'm just getting the last little. I'm getting the drags. So, all right. So yeah, you can shake it, and even if like if it's already, I can see air outgassing from it already. So again, copy. I think copy flex is designed to do that. This particular rubber is designed to outgas. So now it sits. I'm going to very carefully move it back here. You're making, is there a thing in there that you're making a mold of? Legos. You're making a mold of Legos. Yes. So yeah, there's Legos. Oh. Oh. I, always, I thought they were the container. No, yeah, that they, they are. are. Okay, so. So when it comes out, it's going to look like this, ah. through the magic of television. <laughs> this is what it's going to end up. This is what I'm going to end up with is a chunk of orange rubber that is dishwasher safe, that has little Legos, and it, this takes detail incredibly, incredibly well. If you look really close, it has actually taken where it says Lego is engraved on every stud. It's in there. So yeah, through the magic of this is what it ends. This in four hours, I'm gonna have another one of these. Yay! Yay! So are we gonna get to try the samples made from it? Uh -huh. Just wait. Just, wait. Just you wait. It's done All right. Once you get that far, I just gotta walk over here and grab a paper towel. Let my hands off a little. Once you get that far, now you want to make your parts. You you want to make your your casts. Resin is plastic. Comes in two parts, resin, catalyst. Some are one-to-one, -one, some are not. Most resins are not one-to-one. -one. The stuff I use, I mostly use for my work is craft grade. This, uh, this is stuff you get at Michael's. It's called cast and craft. I do not like easy cast. It's one-to-one. -one. It never, I can never get it to cure right. Believe it or not, I have, but this is like 10 to 1 or 12 to 1 or 20 to 1, depending on how big your cast is. I've had better luck with this stuff. This is craft grade. If you're looking for something industrial grade, if you're looking for something to do parts with that need to be under stress tolerances, I don't, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to lie, I don't know as much about resin as I do about the silicone. Because really what it comes down to is for what I do in this hobby, this stuff is fine. I'm making jewelry for costumes. I can get away with using the cheap stuff most of the time. You'll see polyethylene, you'll see, or polyurethane, polyester, epoxy. They all have different mix ratios and different characteristics. You really need to know what, you know, what is your part going to be used for. What kind of tolerances do you need? Do you need really exact, or do you, you know, are you, can you fudge? How much stress is it going to be under? How much, you know, is there going to be for? What kind of forces are involved? I mean, there are um, all kinds of different alternatives. Another alternative that I didn't talk about, it is, it is a red, you can get more along a fiberglass type, Bondo. I've made, I have cast costume parts out of Bondo. 
If I'm doing something where it's opaque, like I did a, a headband and I needed six identical pieces, they didn't need to be uh, clear because I was spray painting them chrome anyway. So I made them, my dad, my dad and I went down to his shop and we mixed up a batch of Bondo and it worked great. So think, you know, think outside the box. I could see um, like keycaps and things like that. Bondo's pretty strong. It's car. I mean, do you guys know what Bondo is? Auto body, body filler? filler. Yeah, body filler for cars. Yeah, it's body filler for cars. It can take an awful, awful lot. What so you, if you've what got you, something, what? What do you use for release agent? Um. So this the late um I bought in my case. Um, I was using the latex. I was using. I don't think I have any. Oh, here I actually have one. Oh, I was using this. I had, this is one of the Bondo pieces. I'll pass it around actually, and it sands really well. This is I made. I made a spare just to have. Um, so I'll pass this around. Bondo sands really well. It shapes really well. It takes, um, yeah, it takes paint really well. Like it's made for cars. So I use a little bit of just the cast and craft release agent. Um, I don't even know if I needed to do that, even with the latex. With the silicone, you'll be surprised at how much it does not stick. But it's the same release agent that you would buy to make a two-part mold, you could use in your molds to make it release. It's just but you buy something called mold release. This is called mold release conditioner. For cast and craft, and it worked. Like I never had a problem pull, and I did a whole pile of those. So how long uh, is the silicone mold good for before it starts to do that? I don't know. Okay. I have not. I will let you know when I break one. Um, the Umu, I did the Umu one that we did in school for the glass bottle. I did 20 hot sugar pulls out of, and it still looks really good. And we're talking like. 300 degree caramel sugar poured in and poured back out. So I mean, it was not I mean, it was not an insignificant amount of stress on this on the silicone, and it was the 20th bottle looked as good as the first. So yeah, Bondo, yeah, Bondo is like the, I can't say enough about Bondo. It is an amazing material for making things. Uh, and if you want clear, you can go with the. I have the. I have the clear with me if anybody wants to play with it with some of the latex. Um, the other thing is this stuff has a shelf life. So if we go outside and play with this, I'm not going to make any guarantees that it actually cures. Because this has been sitting around my house for a while. It's been sitting in my, in my workshop for a while. So when you have the stuff though, with the crazy differences in ratio, how are you measuring that and how close do you have to get? Uh, again, depends on... The material. So if you're going to use, I mean, what I can tell you, Bondo, Bondo, I eyeball. And my, my experience with Bondo is unfortunately my father was helping me. My father does antique cars. My father has a 55 Chevy Cameo pickup. He's a 68 Mustang convertible and he's a 72, 72 Skylark convertible. My dad is like amazing with Bondo. So it's basically, he's like, he basically was like, he's like, it's about this much and about this much. Because he's been doing this for like 60 years, so you, um, with, and what I do know is the more catalysts with Bondo you add, the faster it gets hard. With if you're going to get into if you're going to use the, the casting craft, I know that you need more catalysts than you think. It's going to say on the back here, um, single layer casting. If your cast is you know an eighth of an inch of thick, you need X number of drops of, um, because here's the, where's the catalyst? Catalyst comes to the table. So 15 drops of this to an ounce of this. Okay, For, so you're, you're not having to do, like, measuring? No, no, no. This is going to be, but, um, so here, resin is an exothermic reaction. Resin gets hot. That's how it cures. Yeah, what? I was just I was just saying it's like epoxy. You've yeah, it's using it for, epoxy basically is. Or yeah, yeah, Bondo gets hot. Yeah, it, again, this is a, so that's how it cures. It's cure it's literally curing from the inside out. It's making its own heat to cure. So the more of this you add to this, the faster it's gonna cure, the hotter it's gonna get. Thickness, how thick is your part, how big is your part affects how fast you want it to cure. On the back of the Cast and Craft bottle, it actually says, you know, 
Layer thickness. So single layer cast. If you if it if it's an eighth of an inch cast, you need 15 drops of catalyst. If it's a quarter inch, you need eight. If it's one inch, you need four. It lies. Um, it usually takes about twice as much to three times as much. The, the worst that's going to happen is if you put too much catalyst in this stuff with the casting craft. The worst that's going to happen is your cast is going to crack. It'll crack in the mold because it eats too fast, and then you just throw it out. And when you let it cure, you throw it out. You try again with less catalyst. Resin is, like the silicone, I can basically, it's like ironclad. If you do the measurement, it's going to work. Resin requires a lot, a lot, a lot of practice. So you have to figure out what material you want, and then you have to accept that your first maybe cast or two may not be, you're not going to get perfect results the first time. You need to practice. This is, again, again, this is something I could do an eight-hour workshop on and still not teach you everything you need to know. You need to practice. You just need to get out there and try it. Again, so I, I kind of already went through this. This is the, this, I forgot to switch the slide. Um, heat safe disposable containers. Do not use plastic cups. You end up with pink resin all over your friend's washing machine. <laughs> I'm sorry, Duncan. Still. Um, no wax. So don't eat the, the wax coated paper cups. Uh uh. Because the wax is going to get into the resin and it's going to affect the chemical reaction. I like to use aluminum cans. But make sure they're really, really clean. I cut the tops off and I wear them to the dishwasher. Again, you need disposable mixing sticks. You don't want to be trying to resin, you're never going to get off. Uh, mold release, if you're doing a two-part mold, or even if you're doing a one-part mold, I'll use mold release just because I'm paranoid. Uh, I obviously, I won't for this because you don't need mold releases for candy. And if you're going to do a two-part mold, you can use rubber bands to hold it together. Or duct tape, or use them really strong. Oh, uh, one more question on two-part molds. Yeah. Um, you got to leave a, a hole somewhere to pour yeah. the. Yeah, you. Yeah, that's something uh, else you can do uh, with the clay. How big a hole do you need to? Eh, it depends on depends on the size of the part. Okay. Because a bigger part, you're gonna want a bigger hole. Because otherwise, you're gonna be standing there for 20 minutes pouring this very thin stream and, of resin in. And, and you're would you cure. recommend having like a second hole for air to come out as you a pour? A bigger one might need that. Okay. Yeah. It depends. Again, it depends on the size of the. I've seen people get away without it. Mm -hmm. But if you're doing like a joystick base or something, yeah, you probably. But the problem with that is you got to figure out where to put the, po the hole uh -huh. that your resin's not going to leak out. Got it. Got it. Okay, thanks. Yeah. So because if you put the hole on the side, <laughs> if you end up, if you're yeah, pouring and pouring and the resin's rolling down the table and onto the carpet. <laughs> a word about yeah, resin is it is it is not as safe as playing with the silicone. This is why I'm not doing it in here. Eye protection. Disposable gloves, and if you have breathing problems, a respirator. And I mean a respirator, not a little surgeon's mask. I mean, like when I did this with the good, good stuff, I had the big with the cartridges. Um, with the casting craft, you don't really need that because if as long as you're outside. If this was super, super toxic, they couldn't sell it at Michaels. Anything you get at like Michaels, at Joann's, at Hobby Lobby, it's going to be pretty safe because they keep. They can't sell it otherwise. If you go out online and you start getting into the really the high end resins, even the Bondo, if, um, and you should have a respirator anyway if you're going to start sanding this stuff, because I don't care what this is. If you inhale the dust, it's not good for you. So a respirator is just a good thing to have. Um, I always do this outside, or if you have a very very well ventilated garage, if you. Uh, I guess I've met guys who do this for garage kits, and they actually put vent hoods in their garage to do this with. And again, some are more dangerous than others. Craft grade, you're pretty good. They're, you know, Bondo, the more higher end ones, maybe not so much. Like I said, well ventilated area, I'm gonna harp on that. Clean, make sure the molds are clean. Make sure the molds have mold release in them. Make sure your two-part mold is together with tape or rubber bands. Duct tape works really well. Um, Gorilla tapes worked really because that's what we ended up doing. We were poured what we thought was going to be a one-part mold for the glass bottle, 
but it was shaped like this. It was a Fanta bottle, and we found out we couldn't pull it out all the way without basically cutting the whole thing almost in half, which is another way to make a two-part mold. You can you take a knife and you can cut it in half. But it's a lot easier to mold it that way because it does because what happens is it, it doesn't if you don't cut it right it slides and it does weird things. I probably should have grabbed that last, but I didn't think about that in, at the end of the school year. The seam lines probably look kind of odd too. Right? What? The seam lines would look a little odd. Yeah, the seam lines do look at no, because I can tell you some of the glass bottles like well if you didn't line it up right this but nobody's gonna look from on stage nobody cares. But so if you really want a two part mold don't just cut it, do it as a one part and cut it with a knife. Bad call. Mix it, pour it, let it cure. Take up to 24 to 48 hours. If it doesn't, like I know like cast and craft sometimes will have a hard time curing. Like some of the stuff I made was sticky. Heat helps. Do it on a hot day. If it's not curing or if it's still sticky, um, I drove around with a week with little Iron Man resin parts in the back seat of my car. <laughs> Sitting in the school parking lot when my car gets to be about 90 works really well. Did this solidify already? That's... I am not going to do resin. Suggestion for the uh, cutting a mold in half to make a two-part mold. Uh, use a wire like you would for cheese. Um, it's, you have to have a heavy, you'd have to put a lot of force on it. This, it does not cut easily. Okay. No, we had a, we had a pretty good knife and it still wasn't cutting. Um, Couple other things I've seen done. If you really, really want to get into this, you can buy a pressure vessel. It's called a pressure pot. You can get it at Harbor Freight. You take the cast, the mold, and then you put it in the pressure and you pressurize it to like 1020 psi. It shoves all the air into the middle of the cast. I don't have that equipment. I'm not that super serious about it. But if that's something you really want to get into, you just Google pressure casting or pressure pots, or you go to like Resin Addicts. There's like a forum called Resin Addicts. It's great. That's where you go. And the other thing to remember is your parts are not going to probably come out perfect. You are going to have to shape them, sand them. You are going to have to polish them. Wet sanding is a great, great thing. Polyester resins will be a little tacky on the exposed parts. You can put a little nail polish on them. You can let them sit longer. There is a finishing spray you can buy because the clear nail polish seems to work for me. Or like in my case, they were that was. That was where I was going to glue them onto the dress anyway, so I really didn't care. So to cast, it's really easy. So this is Jello. So, but yeah. So you just take your material, you fill your mold. Except that you're, except in my case, my material has become solid because it's freezing cold in here, and that's not a problem. Wow, that wow. No, I'm Michael. impressed. It usually, in my kitchen, it doesn't get solid this fast. Okay. Put it in the microwave. Put it in the microwave. While that's waiting, while I'm doing this, are there any questions? Because I know I'm running short on time. On uh, resins, how would you? color them? Um, you can buy special, you have to, you, like, you buy special resin. dyes. It depends okay. on the resin, buy the dye that goes with that brand of resin. Okay. And yes, you can color them, and they're, yeah, buy the dye that goes with that brand. You were saying you're using Jell-O, uh, how are you mixing that as per uh, box directions? Uh, no, there, it's a box of Jell-O, and it's two extra packets of unflavored gelatin. King of random. I totally am not, this is, I totally got this off the internet. That's better. Yeah, yes. No, feel free to ask me questions because I can pretty much do this in my sleep. Oh. Oh, yeah, move this. Yeah, thank you. I can do this in my sleep. Um, I know you're not a resin expert, but as an alternative to doing an expensive run of injection molding, Resin casting is has a lot of appeal for I think a lot of our projects honestly, mm -hmm. um, but then <clears throat> uh, you know durability is an issue. If I wanted to make a two piece part, I'd probably want to tap screws. Do you have any idea where I would start with that? I don't. If there is even anything rugged enough, because it yeah, it sounds like I these. Don't know. Okay. So you can see it just pours. It's not 
working like I wanted it to. But okay. That's okay. On yeah, something like that, could you put the screw in the part? I, you might, yeah. You Theoretically, you probably yeah, could because the screw, if you put enough mold release on it, the screw isn't going to stick to the silicone. Yeah. You couldn't, I wouldn't put it in the resin part, but you would have to make the mold with that in mind. Right. Um, but I, I guess I'm kind of worried about, you think about a lot of, People would use something like an ABS plastic for a really durable device, like a game controller. Yeah, like, right? yeah these are, yeah, I think Legos are ABS. Um, and I'm wondering if resins are typically more brittle. Uh, I think, yeah, resin is going to be more brittle than ABS plastic, absolutely. Yeah. I think a lot of the okay, I'm just going to do a couple of these. I'll, I'll, I will cast more later. Okay. So I'm just going to. So I want to wrap this up. I'll deal with this later. Okay. You have failed me! You have failed me, little ball. So I just need to become a chemist, what? is what you're saying. Yeah. But anyway, through the magic of television, it solidifies the little things that look like this. Anybody oh, cool. want some uh, blueberry gummy Legos? Um, oh, jeez, I don't know if they're... They'll be Did cheering. you bring enough for everyone? <laughs> I didn't expect this many people to be interested <laughs> no, no, no. in this. I didn't figure there'd be like what size? What size bricks are there? We'll split them. You, you each get one stud. <laughs> yeah, you each yeah. get yeah, basically. Each okay. get a stud. You know, I'm gonna set them I'm here. Gonna I'm, gonna I'm gonna do exactly what I do when I do food demos at school. With the outside. I yeah, I'm gonna set this down, and I'm gonna walk away, <laughs> Go and I'm gonna let you all have Thunderdome. So you're basically turning your students into Hunger Games. Yes. Uh, okay. Yeah. We have the Hunger Games in my classroom. It's kind of awesome. <laughs> Any other questions? When? Oh, sorry. Oh, go ahead. Just on the on the unmixed spillage. Uh, when? I'll write, you, it, I'll write it down with acid. It, oh, I'm good. So it's it's really the same. It, you would. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'll just wipe it down with acid. Now, because that zeroes out, you should you could be even like put some tin foil over that before yeah. you start. Yeah. Yeah. I probably should out. have done that. Okay. I, I didn't even think. I just, I didn't hundred percent plan this. Be stepping on the Lego. <laughs> be stepping on the Lego. Um, oh, geez. Um, Chris. So if you were going to make a lot of parts, and I'm thinking like Charles or something, like that, how does the cost actually go here to see 3D printing? If it was I don't digital. know. What, I don't know how it costs to 3D print something. Uh, this is a lot cheaper. Okay. So if I wanted, if I wanted to make, if I wanted to make ten of something, it costs <laughs> ten times as much as making one of something. If I'm three D printing it. Yep. If I want to make ten of something, I make the mold one time. I should be able to reuse it ten yes, times. At least. Then obviously the the yep. the, um, the the the. Scale. Depending on what resin you use versus how much filament. I don't know, how, and I don't know how much filament is. So. Well, I the, the stuff that I'm doing is at Shapeways, and so it's a. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the young gentleman back here. How much do this, does this bondo cost? Um, the last time I don't, that is a very good question because my father, when I use bondo, I go to I get it from my dad. Um, I, it's free. You know, it's free. Yes, yeah. <laughs> I want to say probably twenty five, thirty bucks for the kit, and like if that was twenty five dollars worth of silicone, that was one pound. Yeah, the umu and the umu is about comparable. I think we pay for what we bought. We bought four um, one. We bought we bought four trial sets, and it costs a hundred bucks. And also, the the bigger the volume you buy from the project, the cheaper right. it's going to be. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If I'd have bought like you know five or six pounds of Copy Flex, I would have paid a lot less. Um, uh, I've never used Bondo. I imagined it as more of almost a putty for things like side panels. Is it pourable at some It's forms? not really pourable. That's the only difference. Is, yeah, no, Bondo's it's, not, it's, it's like a paste. It's like a paste. Okay. Yeah, it's pourable. That's what I thought. It's not pourable. But so you kind of push it into you the mold? You kind of push it in. Okay. Yeah, I use popsicle sticks to kind of push it into the mold. Okay. So like I said, um, you can, the, that piece right. I passed around, I did with Bondo. Yeah, I mean, the, the people sort of, no, in the yeah, shops, they uh, use like, uh, like plastic bag. Uh, uh, spatulas or something yeah. like yeah. spread them. Yeah, that's yeah. what I've Yeah, yeah it seen. pushes down press. really well. Okay. The cookie press. And then it would, if you get air bubbles, you can take a little tiny bit of Bondo and you just kind of fill, it, fill it in and then sand, sand it back down. Yeah. And I've had to do that before. Okay. Yeah, you could use, I mean, that's kind of what, you can make ice in this. You could. I can make ice the... But the stuff that you pull, that you would pour, can you put that in the mold? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah 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 yeah. As a matter of fact, the uh, one I didn't, I didn't really, you didn't. 
I bought this. I did not make this one. I bought this one from a Lego store. Yeah, and it's a nice cube tray. Oh, okay. Yeah, you can totally, yeah. Yeah, the Jello works for, you can do all kinds of crazy stuff with the Jello. I do the Jello in my classroom with my kids. We just pour it into a pan. We just pour it into a cake pan and cut it up, cut it up. You could because it would, it'll stack and stick to itself. Yeah, it's it's just like working with Jello, only it's really, really strong Jello. I got one more. But um, could you go to the store and get some Jello and pour it into that? Not where you have to, so that Jello, it's not just regular Jello. It's um, a cup, half a cup of water, quarter cup of corn syrup, packet of Jello, two packs of unflavored Knox gelatin. And there's a special way, like, I there's a video where I learned how to do this. The, the gummy thing that he, wait, you have to mix it, you have to mix it a certain way so you don't get a lot of foam and so you have to start with it cold. It's, you're working with, your it's it's less making jello and more making candy. Yeah, you said it was gummy. Uh, that's, uh, the jello kind of threw me off so when Michael and I were trying to tear it apart. It was, it was like... It's a gummy bear. Yeah, it, yeah, it was really I, yeah it's a homemade gummy bear. Yeah, it's really tough to tear apart. Awesome. And if you look really close, you can see the little gummies have Lego written on them. So the candy takes an amazing amount of detail too. Yeah, go ahead, please. I'm, I'm going to make more. So please, please, please eat them. Uh, one thing that I've seen that just struck me is you can act, can you you can actually melt gummy bears. Yes, you can. And pour oh, yeah. them. Yeah, you can. Into the mold rather than making yeah. uh, making it with the jello. Yeah. So if you get a, a big you can get gummy a double bear boiler. Batch, yeah, do it in a double boiler. Yeah. But yeah, I know how to yeah I know how to do that. Because I've seen people making. Gummy bear, uh, well, also gummy bear art in yeah. a variety of ways. That's exactly what you do. James. Say, say you're doing a larger part. Yeah. Do they make a higher viscosity silicone that you can actually brush on? That you can what? That you can actually brush on? Um, or, you know, is it all one of the more? things, yeah, one of, um, I know I've never seen higher viscosity, but one of the things I've seen people do, if you've got a lot, a lot of detail, you can mix a small amount and take a brush and do like a skim coat on your piece and then let that set to make sure it gets into all the little nooks and crannies and then you can pour on top of that. So you can, you can make multiple batches? You can make multiple passes, yeah. Like I said, uh, cured, uncured silicone sticks to cured silicone. If I hadn't had enough to do that, like, I, like for a second I thought I did it, I can just call, I can go, I can order more Poppy uh, Flex, I can pour it on top and it'll stick. Look, I mean, I've got a project of mine. They would take so much silicone out on the edge, take like a gallon on the edge mm -hmm. to reach the peak. So, uh, yeah. I, I, so what you, yeah, what so what you'd almost have to do? Well, it, it, you, yeah, you do it like a chest plate. Okay, say a chest plate for example. You put it down when you go to pour it. If you don't want to pour a big old chunk of silicone, you want to do it to where you can stair step it back. There's a size kind of diminishing returns that you hit with this technique like so you're talking like a chest plate like yeah, I want to do fiber that so I, I've yeah seen, at that point you I, there are better ways there are better ways to make armor than resin I was, I've seen molds like that where they brush it on and yeah. then they, they put that into plaster There's to hold the, the yeah. rest of the shape think, and then they remove it and then the plaster holds that silicon well, that's what I'm saying. I, well, so without having to do a ton of silicon small layer to go right. over yeah. 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 Pour plaster Paris right on it yeah exactly yeah, could, yeah. yeah I've, so I've never made there. anything ginormous like that yeah. if i if that i'm getting small. into armor and ginormous so stuff so like that then i'm getting in there are other techniques yeah, that i use that's probably maybe yeah that's when you get into vacuum for and that's when you get into warm law that's when you get into thermal plastics cardboard and duct tape cardboard and duct tape Works for me. Uh, that's how I make my song. Uh, uh, sound uh, sound uh, 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 Questions, comments, awesome concerns. Uh, uh, I really need to go wash my hands. Go so for it. Thank you. 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 Thank you.